Germanic Languages, Wikipedia Audio Pontic Steppe Caucasus East Asia Modern Status Eastern Europe Northern Europe Domestication of the Horse, Kurgan, Kurgan Culture, Steppe Cultures, Bugdniester, Sredny Stog, Dnieperdonets, Samara, Kvalinsk, Yamna, Mikhailovka Culture Pontic Steppe Northern-slash-Eastern Steppe Europe South Asia Steppe Mako Europe Caucasus Afanasivvo West Germanic Languages India Indo-Aryans Iranians Europe East Asia Europe Indo-Aryan North Germanic languages Statistics Iranian Usadavo, Cernavad, Kyukutani History Characteristics Linguistic developments Common linguistic features Phonology Indian Corded Ware, Baden, Middle Dnieper Iranian Chariot, Yamna, Catacomb, Multi-Cordoned Ware, Poltovka, Srubna Others Abashavo Culture, Andronovo Sintashta Table of Outcomes Europe The Germanic languages are a branch of the Indo-European language family spoken natively by a population of about 515 million people mainly in Europe, North America, Oceania, and Southern Africa. The West Germanic languages include the three most widely spoken Germanic languages, English with around 36400 million native speakers, German with over 100 million native speakers, and Dutch with 23 million native speakers. Other West Germanic languages include Afrikaans, an offshoot of Dutch, with over 7.1 million native speakers, Low German, considered a separate collection of unstandardized dialects with roughly 0.3 million native speakers and assuming 6.710 million people who can understand it and 1.7 million in the Netherlands, Yiddish, once used by approximately 13 million Jews in pre-World War II Europe and Scots, both with 1.5 million native speakers, Limburgish varieties with roughly 1.3 million speakers along the Dutch-Belgian-German border, and the Frisian languages with over 0.5 million native speakers in the Netherlands and Germany. The main North Germanic languages are Swedish, Danish, Norwegian, Icelandic and Faroese, which have a combined total of about 20 million speakers. The East Germanic branch included Gothic, Burgundian and Vandalic, all of which are now extinct. The last to die off was Crimean Gothic, spoken until the late 18th century in some isolated areas of Crimea. The Sil Ethnologue lists 48 different living Germanic languages, 41 of which belong to the western branch and 6 to the northern branch. It places Ryagrain Denser Huns Ruckish German in neither of the categories, but it is often considered a German dialect by linguists. The total number of Germanic languages throughout history is unknown as some of them, especially the East Germanic languages, disappeared during or after the migration period. Some of the West Germanic languages also did not survive past the migration period, including Lombardic. As a result of World War II, 
the German language suffered a significant loss of spracrum, as well as more abundance and extinction of several of its dialects. In the 21st century, its dialects are dying out anyway due to standard German gaining primacy. The common ancestor of all of the languages in this branch is called Proto-Germanic, also known as Common Germanic, which was spoken in about the middle of the first millennium BC in Iron Age Scandinavia. Proto-Germanic, along with all of its descendants, is characterized by a number of unique linguistic features, most famously the consonant change known as Grimm's Law. Early varieties of Germanic entered history with the Germanic tribes moving south from Scandinavia in the 2nd century BC, to settle in the area of today's northern Germany and southern Denmark. Morphology English is an official language of Belize, Canada, Falkland Islands, Malta, New Zealand, Ireland, South Africa, Philippines, Jamaica, Dominica, Guiana, Trinidad, and Tobago, American Samoa, Palau, St. Lucia, Grenada, Barbados, St. Vincent and the Grenadines, Puerto Rico, Guam, Hong Kong, Pakistan, India, Papua New Guinea, Vanuatu, the Solomon Islands and former British colonies in Asia, Africa, and Oceania. Furthermore, it is the de facto language of the United Kingdom, the United States and Australia. It is also a recognized language in Nicaragua and Malaysia. American English speakers make up the majority of all native Germanic speakers, including also making up the bulk of West Germanic speakers. German is an official language of Austria, Belgium, Germany, Liechtenstein, Luxembourg and Switzerland and has regional status in Italy, Poland, Namibia and Denmark. German also continues to be spoken as a minority language by immigrant communities in North America, South America, Central America, Mexico, and Australia. A German dialect, Pennsylvania Dutch, is still present amongst Anabaptist populations in Pennsylvania in the United States. Globular amphora, corded ware, beaker, unetus, tritzini c. Nordic Bronze Age, Turmery, Tumulus, Urnfield, Lusitian. Strong versus weak nouns and adjectives. Dutch is an official language of Aruba, Belgium, Curaçao, the Netherlands, Sint Martin, and Suriname. The Netherlands also colonized Indonesia, but Dutch was scrapped as an official language after Indonesian independence and today it is only used by older or educated people. Dutch was until 1925 an official language in South Africa but evolved in and was replaced by Afrikaans, a partially mutually intelligible daughter language of Dutch. BMAC, Yaz, Gandhara Grave Afrikaans is one of the eleven official languages in South Africa and is a lingua franca of Namibia. It is used in other southern African nations, as well. Chernoles Classification Diachronic Contemporary Low German is a collection of very diverse dialects spoken in the northeast of the Netherlands and northern Germany. Scots is spoken in Lowland Scotland and parts of Ulster. Frisian is spoken among half a million people who live on the southern fringes of the North Sea in the Netherlands, Germany, and Denmark. Luxembourgish is a Moselle Franconian dialect that is spoken mainly in the Grand Duchy of Luxembourg, where it is considered to be an official language. Similar varieties of Moselle Franconian are spoken in small parts of Belgium, France, and Germany. Yiddish, once a native language of some 11 to 13 million people, is used by some Jewish communities throughout the world, 
mainly in North America, Europe, Israel, and other regions with Jewish populations. Limburgish varieties are spoken in the Limburg and Rhineland regions, along the Dutch-Belgian-German border. In addition to being the official language in Sweden, Swedish is also spoken natively by the Swedish-speaking minority in Finland, which is a large part of the population along the coast of western and southern Finland. Swedish is also one of the two official languages in Finland, along with Finnish, and the only official language in the Åland Islands. Swedish is also spoken by some people in Estonia. Danish is an official language of Denmark and in its overseas territory of the Faroe Islands, and it is a lingua franca and language of education in its other overseas territory of Greenland, where it was one of the official languages until 2009. Danish is also spoken natively by the Danish minority in the German state of Schleswig-Holstein, where it is recognized as a minority language. Norwegian is the official language of Norway. Icelandic is the official language of Iceland. Faroese is the official language of the Faroe Islands, and it is also spoken by some people in Denmark. Germanic languages by share. All Germanic languages are thought to be descended from a hypothetical Proto-Germanic, united by subjection to the sound shifts of Grimm's Law and Werner's Law. These probably took place during the pre-Roman Iron Age of Northern Europe from c. 500 BC. Proto-Germanic itself was likely spoken after c. 500 BC, and Proto-Norse from the 2nd century AD and later is still quite close to reconstructed Proto-Germanic, but other common innovations separating Germanic from Proto-Indo-European suggest a common history of pre-Proto-Germanic speakers throughout the Nordic Bronze Age. From the time of their earliest attestation, the Germanic varieties are divided into three groups, West, East, and North Germanic. Their exact relation is difficult to determine from the sparse evidence of runic inscriptions. The western group would have formed in the late Jasturf culture, and the eastern group may be derived from the first century variety of Gotland, leaving southern Sweden as the original location of the northern group. The earliest period of Elder Futhark predates the division in regional script variants, and linguistically essentially still reflect the common Germanic stage. Vamos inscriptions AD 160, are the oldest Germanic writing. The earliest coherent Germanic text preserved is the 4th century Gothic translation of the New Testament by Ulfilas. Early testimonies of West Germanic are in Old Frankish slash Old Dutch, Old High German, and Old English. North Germanic is only attested in scattered runic inscriptions, as Proto-Norse, until it evolves into Old Norse by about 800. Longer runic inscriptions survive from the 8th and 9th centuries, longer texts in the Latin alphabet survive from the 12th century, and some skaldic poetry dates back to as early as the 9th century. By about the 10th century, the varieties had diverged enough to make intercomprehensibility difficult. The linguistic contact of the Viking settlers of the Danelaw with the Anglo-Saxons left traces in the English language and is suspected to have facilitated the collapse of Old English grammar that resulted in Middle English from the 12th century. The East Germanic languages were marginalized from the end of the migration period. The Burgundians, Goths, and Vandals became linguistically assimilated by their respective neighbors by about the 7th century, with only Crimean Gothic lingering on until the 18th century. During the early Middle Ages, the West Germanic languages were separated by the insular development of Middle English on one hand and by the High German consonant shift on the continent on the other, resulting in Upper German and Low Saxon 
with graded intermediate Central German varieties. By early modern times, the span had extended into considerable differences, ranging from highest Alemannic in the south to northern Low Saxon in the north, and, although both extremes are considered German, they are hardly mutually intelligible. The southernmost varieties had completed the second sound shift, while the northern varieties remained unaffected by the consonant shift. The North Germanic languages, on the other hand, remained unified until well past 1000 AD, and in fact the mainland Scandinavian languages still largely retain mutual intelligibility into modern times. The main split in these languages is between the mainland languages and the island languages to the west, especially Icelandic, which has maintained the grammar of Old Norse virtually unchanged, while the mainland languages have diverged greatly. Germanic languages possess a number of defining features compared with other Indo-European languages. Probably the most well-known are the following. Other significant characteristics are Note that some of the above characteristics were not present in Proto-Germanic but developed later as aerial features that spread from language to language. Roughly speaking, Germanic languages differ in how conservative or how progressive each language is with respect to an overall trend toward analyticity. Some, such as Icelandic and, to a lesser extent, German, have preserved much of the complex inflectional morphology inherited from Proto-Germanic. Others, such as English, Swedish, and Afrikaans, have moved toward a largely analytic type. The subgroupings of the Germanic languages are defined by shared innovations. It is important to distinguish innovations from cases of linguistic conservatism. That is, if two languages in a family share a characteristic that is not observed in a third language, that is evidence of common ancestry of the two languages only if the characteristic is an innovation compared to the family's proto-language. The following innovations are common to the Northwest Germanic languages. The following innovations are also common to the Northwest Germanic languages but represent aerial changes. The following innovations are common to the West Germanic languages. The following innovations are common to the Ingvionic subgroup of the West Germanic languages, which includes English, Frisian and in a few cases Dutch and Low German, but not High German. The following innovations are common to the Anglo-Frisian subgroup of the Ingvionic languages. The oldest Germanic languages all share a number of features, which are assumed to be inherited from Proto-Germanic. Phonologically, it includes the important sound changes known as Grimm's Law and Werner's Law, which introduced a large number of fricatives, late Proto-Indo-European had only one, slash s slash. The main vowel developments are the merging of long and short slash a slash and slash o slash, producing short slash a slash and long slash slash. That likewise affected the diphthongs, with pi slash ai slash and slash oi slash merging into slash ai slash and pi slash o slash and slash ou slash merging into slash o slash. Pi slash ei slash developed into long slash slash. Pi long slash slash developed into a vowel denoted as slash one slash, while a new, Fairly uncommon long vowel slash two slash developed in varied and not completely understood circumstances. Proto-Germanic had no front rounded vowels, but all Germanic languages except for Gothic subsequently developed them through the process of Iumlaut. Proto-Germanic developed a strong stress accent on the first syllable of the root but remnants of the original free pi accent are visible due to Werner's law, which was sensitive to this accent. 
that caused a steady erosion of vowels in unstressed syllables. In Proto-Germanic, that had progressed only to the point that absolutely final short vowels were lost and absolutely final long vowels were shortened, but all of the early literary languages show a more advanced state of vowel loss. This ultimately resulted in some languages losing practically all vowels following the main stress and the consequent rise of a very large number of monosyllabic words. The following table shows the main outcomes of Proto-Germanic vowels and consonants in the various older languages. For vowels, only the outcomes in stressed syllables are shown. Outcomes in unstressed syllables are quite different vary from language to language and depend on a number of other factors whether the preceding syllable was light or heavy. Notes The oldest Germanic languages have the typical complex inflected morphology of old Indo-European languages, with four or five noun cases, verbs marked for person, number, tense, and mood, multiple noun and verb classes, few or no articles, and rather free word order. The Old Germanic languages are famous for having only two tenses, with three pi past tense aspects merged into one and no new tenses developing. There were three moods, indicative, subjunctive, and imperative. Gothic verbs had a number of archaic features inherited from pi that were lost in the other Germanic languages with few traces, including dual endings an inflected passive voice, and a class of verbs with reduplication in the past tense. The complex tense system of modern English is almost entirely due to subsequent developments. Writing Among the primary innovations in Proto-Germanic are the preterite present verbs, a special set of verbs whose present tense looks like the past tense of other verbs and which is the origin of most modal verbs in English, a past tense ending that appears variously as slash d slash or slash t slash, often assumed to be derived from the verb to do, and two separate sets of adjective endings, originally corresponding to a distinction between indefinite semantics and definite semantics. Note that most modern Germanic languages have lost most of the inherited inflectional morphology as a result of the steady attrition of unstressed endings triggered by the strong initial stress. Icelandic and to a lesser extent modern German best preserve the Proto-Germanic inflectional system, with four noun cases, three genders, and well-marked verbs. English and Afrikaans are at the other extreme with almost no remaining inflectional morphology. The following shows a typical masculine A-stem noun, Proto-Germanic asterisk fiskas, and its development in the various old literary languages. Originally, adjectives in Proto-Indo-European followed the same declensional classes as nouns. The most common class used a combination of O stem endings for masculine and neuter genders and A with macron stems ending for feminine genders, but other common classes used endings from a single vowel stem declension for all genders, and various other classes existed that were based on other declensions. A quite different set of pronominal endings was used for pronouns, determiners, and words with related semantics. An important innovation in Proto-Germanic was the development of two separate sets of adjective endings, originally corresponding to a distinction between indefinite semantics and definite semantics. The endings of indefinite adjectives were derived from a combination of pronominal endings with one of the common vowel stem adjective declensions usually the O A with Macron class but sometimes the I or U classes. Definite adjectives, however, had endings based on n-stem nouns. Originally both types of adjectives could be used by themselves, but already by Proto-Germanic times a pattern evolved whereby definite adjectives had to be accompanied by a determiner with definite semantics, while indefinite adjectives were used in other circumstances. 
Vocabulary Comparison In the 19th century, the two types of adjectives indefinite and definite were respectively termed strong and weak, names which are still commonly used. These names were based on the appearance of the two sets of endings in modern German. In German, the distinctive case endings formerly present on nouns have largely disappeared, with the result that the load of distinguishing one case from another is almost entirely carried by determiners and adjectives. Furthermore, due to regular sound change, the various definite adjective endings coalesced to the point where only two endings remain in modern German to express the 16 possible inflectional categories of the language. The indefinite adjective endings were less affected by sound change, with six endings remaining, cleverly distributed in a way that is capable of expressing the various inflectional categories without too much ambiguity. As a result, the definite endings were thought of as too weak to carry inflectional meaning and in need of strengthening by the presence of an accompanying determiner while the indefinite endings were viewed as strong enough to indicate the inflectional categories even when standing alone. By analogy, the terms strong and weak were extended to the corresponding noun classes, with a stem and stem nouns termed strong and n stem nouns termed weak. However, in Proto-Germanic and still in Gothic, the most conservative Germanic language the terms strong and weak are not clearly appropriate. For one thing, there were a large number of noun declensions. The A-stem, stem, and N-stem declensions were the most common and represented targets into which the other declensions were eventually absorbed, but this process occurred only gradually. Originally the N-stem declension was not a single declension but a set of separate declensions with related endings, and these endings were in no way any weaker than the endings of any other declensions. Although it is possible to group the various noun declensions into three basic categories vowel stem, N-stem, and other consonant stem the vowel stem nouns do not display any sort of unity in their endings that supports grouping them together with each other but separate from the n stem endings. It is only in later languages that the binary distinction between strong and weak nouns become more relevant. In Old English, the n stem nouns form a single, clear class but the masculine A-stem and feminine stem nouns have little in common with each other, and neither has much similarity to the small class of U-stem nouns. Similarly, in Old Norse, the masculine A-stem and feminine stem nouns have little in common with each other, and the continuations of the masculine and stem and feminine N-slash-N-stem nouns are also quite distinct. It is only in Middle Dutch and Modern German that the various vowel stem nouns have merged to the point that a binary strong slash weak distinction clearly applies. As a result, newer grammatical descriptions of the Germanic languages often avoid the terms strong and weak except in conjunction with German itself, preferring instead to use the terms indefinite and definite for adjectives and to distinguish nouns by their actual stem class. Footnotes Notes In English, both two sets of adjective endings were lost entirely in the late Middle English period. Note that divisions between and among subfamilies of Germanic are rarely precisely defined, most form continuous clines, with adjacent varieties being mutually intelligible and more separated ones not. Within the Germanic language family is East Germanic, West Germanic, and North Germanic. However, East Germanic languages became extinct several centuries ago. In some literature, the West Germanic grouping is also called South Germanic or is further divided between West and South Germanic as opposed to forming a single group. The table below shows the succession of the significant historical stages of each language and their approximate groupings and subfamilies. 
vertical sequence within each group does not imply a measure of greater or lesser similarity. Sources Germanic languages in general Proto-Germanic Old Norse Old English Old High German All living Germanic languages belong either to the West Germanic or to the North Germanic branch. The West Germanic group is the larger by far, further subdivided into Anglo-Frisian on one hand and Continental West Germanic on the other. Anglo-Frisian notably includes English and all its variants, while Continental West Germanic includes German, as well as Dutch. Modern classification looks like this. For a full classification, see List of Germanic Languages. The earliest evidence of Germanic languages comes from names recorded in the 1st century by Tacitus, but the earliest Germanic writing occurs in a single instance in the 2nd century BC on the Nega helmet. From roughly the 2nd century AD, Certain speakers of early Germanic varieties developed the Elder Futhark, an early form of the runic alphabet. Early runic inscriptions also are largely limited to personal names and difficult to interpret. The Gothic language was written in the Gothic alphabet developed by Bishop Ulfilas for his translation of the Bible in the 4th century. Later, Christian priests and monks who spoke and read Latin in addition to their native Germanic varieties began writing the Germanic languages with slightly modified Latin letters. However, throughout the Viking Age, runic alphabets remained in common use in Scandinavia. In addition to the standard Latin script, many Germanic languages use a variety of accent marks and extra letters, including the SS, A, E, A, A, U, O, and the Latinized runes and In print, German used to be prevalently set in black clutter type faces until the 1940s, when current and, since the early 20th century, Sutterland were used for German handwriting. Yiddish is written using an adapted Hebrew alphabet. Several of the terms in the table below have had semantic drift. For example, the form sturban and other terms for die are cognates with the English word starve. There is also at least one example of a common borrowing from a non-Germanic source. Thracosamarian, Halshtot, Jasterf. Kalchen. Painted grey ware. Northern Black Polished Ware Indo-Aryans Iranians, Scythians, Persians, Medes Celts, Gauls, Celt-Iberians, Insular Celts Tokarians Balts, Slavs, Albanians, Medieval Europe Medieval India Greater Persia Vedic, Hinduism Persian, Zoroastrianism Armenian Paleo-Balkans, Greek, Roman, Celtic, Irish, Scottish, Breton, Welsh, Cornish Germanic umlaut only affected the North and West Germanic languages but not the now extinct East Germanic languages, such as Gothic, nor Proto-Germanic, the common ancestor of all Germanic languages, the large inventory of vowel qualities is a later development, due to a combination of Germanic umlaut and the tendency in many Germanic languages for pairs of long-slash-short vowels of originally identical quality to develop distinct qualities, with the length distinction sometimes eventually lost. Proto-Germanic had only five distinct vowel qualities, although there were more actual vowel phonemes because length and possibly nasality were phonemic. In modern German, Long short vowel pairs still exist but are also distinct in quality, 
Proto-Germanic probably had a more general SOVI word order. However, the tendency toward V2 order may have already been present in latent form and may be related to Wackernigel's law, an Indo-European law dictating that sentence clitics must be placed second. The lowering of slash u slash to slash o slash in initial syllables before slash a slash in the following syllable, labial umlaut in unstressed medial syllables, the conversion of slash one slash into slash a with macron slash in stressed syllables. In unstressed syllables, West Germanic also has this change, but North Germanic has shortened the vowel to slash e slash then raised it to slash i slash. This suggests it was an aerial change, the raising of final slash slash to slash u slash. It is kept distinct from the nasal slash slash, which is not raised, the monophthongization of slash a i slash n slash o slash to slash slash n slash slash in non-initial syllables the development of an intensified demonstrative ending in slash s slash, introduction of a distinct oblaut grade in class 7 strong verbs, while Gothic uses reduplication as part of a comprehensive reformation of the GMC class 7 from a reduplicating to a new oblaut pattern, which presumably started in verbs beginning with vowel or slash h slash, there are forms which Retain traces of reduplication even in West and North Germanic. Proto-Germanic slash Z slash slash R slash. Note that this is not present in Proto-Norse and must be ordered after West Germanic loss of final slash Z slash. Germanic umlaut. Loss of final slash Z slash. In single syllable words, Old High German retains it while it disappears in the other West Germanic languages, change of to stop in all environments, change of slash l slash to stop slash ld slash dot, West Germanic gemination of consonants, except r, before slash j slash. This only occurred in short-stemmed words due to Seaver's law. Gemination of slash p slash, slash t slash, Slash K slash N slash H slash is also observed before liquids, labiovelar consonants become plain velar when non-initial, a particular type of umlaut slash EUI slash slash IUI slash dot, the change of slash B slash or slash G slash to slash W slash before nasal consonant, changes to the second person singular past tense. Replacement of the past singular stem vowel with the past plural stem vowel, and substitution of the ending t with dot, short forms of the verbs for stand and go, but note that Crimean Gothic also has gn, the development of a gerund. The so called ingvionic nasal spirant law, with loss of slash n slash before voiceless fricatives, e.g., asterisk mun. Asterisk Gans Old English M, GS Mouth, Goose, but German Mund, Gans, the loss of the Germanic reflexive pronoun, the reduction of the three Germanic verbal plural forms into one form ending in dot, the development of class three weak verbs into a relic class consisting of four verbs, the split of the class two weak verb ending asterisk dash into asterisk dash dash slash dash j dash dot, Development of a plural ending asterisk dash s in a stem. Nouns. Cf modern English plural s, but German plural e, possibly, the monophthongization of Germanic asterisk ai to slash a with macron. Raising of nasalized a, a with macron into o, dot, Anglo Frisian brightening, fronting of non nasal a. A with macron to a e comma when not followed by n or m, metathesis of crv into cvr, where c represents any consonant and v any vowel, monophthongization of ai into a with macron. c means before a vowel, c means between vowels, c means after a vowel. 
Word final outcomes generally occurred after deletion of final short vowels, which occurred shortly after Proto-Germanic and is reflected in the history of all written languages except for Proto-Norse, the above three are given in the order C, C, C. If one is omitted, the previous one applies. For example, F, means that occurs after a vowel regardless of what follows, something like a means a if slash u slash occurs in the next syllable dot, something like a means a if slash n slash immediately follows dot, something like a means a if slash n slash immediately precedes. West Germanic languages, High German languages, Upper German, Alemannic German, Austro-Bavarian German, Machino language, Cimbrian language, Hutrite German.